My name is Musa. You guys know me as the founder of Riso. And for the last year or so, we've been out here putting in a lot of work, um, supporting many communities up and down the country and seeing the real effect that homelessness has on the UK. Yo, you see tonight, everyone's smiling, enjoying their life. It's the middle of the weekend. Let's all live like everything's all right. And tomorrow, yeah, that's probably gonna be the same again. Let's eat food with our families. Let's go outside and let's chill with our friends. The day will come where we have to stand and account for our deeds. The day will come. Nothing else matters. You know, the importance of footwear wasn't something that I would say was like was the obvious to me. You know what I mean? It wasn't. I wouldn't say it was something that was the obvious. I would say that the fact that we was able to travel to the Gambia and do a lot of work, you know, with my friend's project, Abu Bakr, the spot project, we was able to go out there and help orphans. And also when you go over there, you tend to see the condition of the people and some of the things that they're lacking or that they don't have. But one of the things that weighed heavy on me was that, what are we doing in the UK? You know, where we live, where we're from, how are we giving back, how are we making a difference? Just over a year ago, he came to me and told me about Riso. Um, I had known about it before when the tragedy happened at Grenfell, and he, he started something called Kick Poverty. But for various different reasons, that kind of took a back seat, and then he came back, like I said, like just over a year ago, and ended up at Riso. He gave me the opportunity to work alongside him, and yeah, that's that's kind of how I became involved with Riso, and now. Well, just over a year later, I'm an assistive director here. It started to come and become more obvious to me. And then I saw the importance of footwear, not just to us as normal, because everyone, I always say to people, when you go to a shop and you buy a pair of trainers and you put them on, you feel like a million dollars. You walk taller, you try them on, you think, you know what, this is me. And you just feel better about yourself. What for the homeless person who doesn't have a home, who, who doesn't barely get any new stuff or anything like that? What impact do you think that has on them? And I got to see that firsthand, you know, and seeing how happy it made them and how um, it kind of, you know, lifted them, reminded me of how I feel when I went in the shop. And I thought to myself, what makes me different from anyone who's homeless? Like, why do I get so much joy of putting on a new pair of shoes and didn't think it would have the same impact on somebody that was homeless when it has that and even more. So I think shoes, you know, to those who are homeless is very important. Come and take a look into our storage and see the kicks that we got on display, on show, ready to hit the streets with the homeless. To remember um, just over a year ago I was sitting on the stairs and I had about 20 to 30 pairs of trainers today this is where we're at when we do our big drops um, that we try to do once a, a once a month every second Sunday of the month with the street angels we normally pack up about 90 to 100 pairs of trainers so this is where we come to do that and this is all obviously thanks to your donation so obviously we've gone from 20 to 30 pairs to over I would say a thousand pairs of trainers here. You know, a lot has happened from that time, from having less than a hundred pairs to having like a thousand pairs, is that we've transitioned and collecting a bigger audience, people who support the work that we do, people that are inclined and are inspired and influenced by the work that we do. Running, running. In the city you came all slow. How we got acquainted regarding um, Riso. Obviously, I've got the sneaker store here, and he decided to start his um, um, charity project. And I, uh, I was willing to um, use the space as a drop off point for any donations within the area or anywhere else. Um, that's how Copy and Riso um, like connected together. Unfortunately, we live in a day and age where poverty still exists. Um, there's people out there that can't afford even probably shoes that are 20 pound. Some people can't afford it. So if you've got an old pair of trainers that you don't wear no more, you don't use, what's the point of just having it locked away in, in your cellar or underneath your bed? 
Like you can literally donate it to someone that can make good use of it. As a non-profit organization, you know, we don't, we don't get paid for the, for the work that we do, nor do we, you know, make money from the work that we do. So we, we rely on donations and organizations and, and partnerships and people, people just being inclined to the work that we do and supporting that work. The resale was introduced to me by Taylor McWilliams, who is the owner of Brixton Village. Um, it was through a conversation after he had met with Musa, Chris and the team, um, and he explained to me what they were as a social enterprise. Um, a pair of cool young kids um, really bringing something positive to young and disadvantaged people. So yeah, what I eventually want to see is resold being the anchor brand that houses a number of social enterprise groups within it. And then move forward with different you know groups of people supporting and and taking us on and taking the project to heart it's allowed us to to be where we are today in Brixton Village and that's with you know the help of Mr Taylor the landlord. But even here at Brixton Village initially they reached out to Musa it's not been us having to chase down needs, it's people actually believing in the work, seeing it for what is, okay, you guys donate shoes. Simple concept, massive reward. So Musa came to us with the idea of resell probably around like early last year. Um, and he explained to us that what he wanted to do in terms of giving the less fortunate and the homeless um, trainers. So if someone brings trainers to Musa to give away to the homeless, we don't intend on just giving those who are less fortunate um, less, in other words. We want to give them something that they'll be proud to wear, happy to wear, that will last long. So what happens is they come to VAMP, we clean them up for them, and we ensure that these shoes look presentable for, for somebody, for a human being, you could say. Love for your brother what you love for yourself. So when I first found out about Resol through Musa, when he was just explaining what he wanted to do, just in terms of coming down to the soup kitchen and and supporting some of our service users with, with you know their their footwear in particular, and and for me it was a real eye opener because I thought to myself, in the past we've got a food bank, we've got clothes bank, so we was doing quite a holistic project, but a lot of the time the quality of of of, of these products would be clearly you know second hand. So when Musa introduced me to the idea, I was quite excited about it, but I was also had a lot of questions about where he was going to get, you know, top level trainers and, and footwear from. And for me, it's, it's been exciting to really see the progression. I just remember him calling me saying he wants to come down to the soup kitchen and, you know, deliver some trainers. And I was like, oh yeah, come through when you're ready. And to see the amount of trainers that he came with, the conversations that he was having with the service users, he was really natural with them, even though they're not really big fans of, of like new people coming into the service because of some of the traumas and their previous experiences but he's, he's done really well with them and even to hear some of the feedback from them around what having good quality footwear meant to them in terms of their self-esteem a lot of them said the first thing that people look at is their feet and for me just to hear him talking to them about their self-confidence about their footwear about their foot health was really interesting for me it was a real education for me Time for good deeds. This week, we met a brilliant man who's found a unique way of improving the lives of vulnerable teenagers and the homeless. I've had normal conversations with people who are just, you look at sometimes and you think, how has this even come about? How are we sitting in the room with Russell Howard and his dad saying, we love your work and X, Y, and Z. It's, uh, sometimes it's really strange, but it's encouraging, I think, I think for me as well. And I know for, for myself and maybe Musa as well, it's something your children can look at and be proud. I think one of the highlights for me would have been the Russell Howard show and how early it came in the in the founding of Riso. I feel like um, Russell Howard is a household name and someone that we've watched on the BBC for many years and then him getting onto Sky and being a well-known comedian. And I feel like um, being able to be in the audience when the video was played and to see the impact that it had on the people that were there and then also to see the impact that it had on him and his family was massive, to, was massive for us. And to also see that, you know, it allowed, it, it was such an impact that it made him and his dad want to follow on in working with us and supporting us and being a part of what we're doing. 
I think that was massive. And it also put us on a different platform, which is your, you know, your daytime TV. And it kind of took us across the country and allowed people to get to know what Riso was about. So we're here in Charing Cross with Riso, who are giving trainers to the homeless. All right, let me get in there, let me get in there. These are all small sizes. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. These trainers were donated by Riso in the UK to Swap Project in the Gambia. So we're distributing it in the village here in Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. It's nice? Yeah, nice. Good. So today, we're just going to be going central. Um, we're going to do a couple drops. Um, homeless run. Obviously, we've, we're in lockdown right now, so it's a bit difficult out there for the homeless community. Yeah. Sometimes we just do a quick clean up on the SWAT. Um, more often than not, stuff goes to Vamp. Vamp will clean it up. We go back and pick it up and redistribute it. But obviously, some days like this, when we're doing the spontaneous ones, um, we just give a quick clean up on the thing that those that are not in too bad a condition. Mind giving him a few words just about why you think schemes like this are important to support people? It's, very, it's vitally important that without the situation we're in now today, that, mm. that everybody needs as much help as they can get. And it's guys like you that come out and help us and give us that, and give us that hope. And uh, yeah. For most homeless people is footwear, especially in the times where we are with COVID, where many homeless people they don't have masks, so you can't get on public transport. This is an issue wherein they're already not looked upon favourably using public transport anyway. So now when you have to have a mask and certain other things, it's a, it makes it more difficult. So the trainers are a necessity rather than a, a luxury. It's wet. What, what size, my friend? Eight. 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 Okay. So take your size, we're going to come back with some shoes for you, yeah? Okay. Yeah, size eight, yeah? Size six. I'm worried about book size. <laughs> We size six, yeah? Size six, size six. And you're size ten. What size are them ones you got? These are nine and they're a bit small. And yeah, them ones are small. So they're gonna be the ones that we got under. You see tonight. Everyone's smiling, enjoying their life. It's the middle of the weekend. Let's all live like everything's alright. And tomorrow, yeah. Tonight? That's probably gonna be the same again. Let's eat food with our families. Let's go outside and let's chill with our friends. The day will come. Can we eradicate um, homelessness? Can we sh shun enough light on the situation by how many pair of trainers we have to distribute every year to say why are these guys giving out so many pairs of trainers to homeless people still in the year 2020? Anyone who's close with us has kind of noticed that growth. From the outside it probably looks like it's still doing the same things via social media but in the background we know what we're trying to achieve and where we're trying to go. And, um, doing it with no funding but been no funding from statutory bodies everything's been community driven um, a lot of it was from ourselves at first and then we've had people donate cash here donations of shoes obviously has all been community led so that growth in itself seeing what you can achieve with just the resources around you and the people around you i think it's just massive and it's, it's an inspiration for other young people because we want to show people in these communities as well is you don't have to just be a footballer, a rapper, an actor. There is so many ways that you can better yourself in your community, but you have to want to better your community first. Knowing that all the donors that we have online, everyone that distributes shoes, the sneaker heads, your, your average Joe, everyone that donates a pair of trainers to us, and then we're able to put it in the right use and we can see someone else benefit for that. that, that that's, that's tremendous to us. Because a lot of the time, without the public donating shoes to us or the brands or whoever it might be, then this doesn't get to happen, do you know what I mean? And like I said, for us, it's a tool of engagement to hopefully be able to get them onto other services that get them off the streets because we don't want them to be on the streets, you know what I mean? No one wants to keep homelessness going. We want to be able to kind of eradicate that. We're not going to say that our shoes are going to do that but we're hoping that it's a term of engagement and then we can get them to the services that in the long term will get them away from the streets, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah.
Now for one minute, I be looking for some inspiration I got my pen, I got my pad, I write with dedication You see this poetry, my medication I ain't a doctor, but I work on patience I have been reflecting on my life, who I be around I think it's time for me to ghost, you won't hear a sound If you wanna make it come up, gotta settle down Protect your soul when you fight to your last round And they gon' ask how And I'ma tell them I deserve this, cause I been working I put my trust in a lie, cause that's the first thing I've been looking for some guidance, forever searching You see I'm traveling